So in the last video, I went over the subject of lift and how it is related to Bernoulli's principle. In this video, I want to explore these subjects a bit more. I'm going to talk about the Bernoulli's principle and some other things. And by the end of this video, it will be much clearer how lift is actually created. There are some things that I'm actually not going to talk about, and that's something I'm going to discuss in the next video. So in this video, I'm still going to stay in the realm of, let's say, uh, Bernoulli's principle and curved surfaces and, and etc. So let's talk a bit more about Bernoulli's principle. It is named after Daniel Bernoulli, a famous Swiss mathematician from the 18th century. The classic example is, well, let's say you have a tube and you have a wide side and a narrow side and there's a liquid inside this tube that's moving to the right in this example. So we are, you know, we, it's quite intuitive. Let's say there's speed V1 on the left side, on the wider side, and V2 in the narrow side. And it's quite intuitive that V2 in this case will be bigger than V1. We've all experienced that. Like if you, for example, you have a hose and you squeeze the hose, then the water uh, runs faster. And uh, this is related to the law of conservation of energy. So Bernoulli was asking, uh, what's the relation between speed and pressure? And it turns out that there's a relationship between them. And the relationship is that P1, P plus rho v squared divided by 2 equals c, where p is pressure, rho is density, and this is practically speaking some kind of a constant, some number that's related to the material inside uh, the tube. v is the speed of the liquid, and c is uh, another constant. And for the sake of this video, uh, when I talk about airplanes and lift and, and these things, it, you can say it also applies for gas, okay? In this specific case, I'm not saying it's the always true, etc., but it's good enough for the discussion about airplanes and lift. So, I can actually uh, write the equation. I can say that P1 plus rho V1 squared divided by 2 equals P2 plus rho V2 squared divided by 2 equals C. And from this, I can uh, deduce that if P1 is bigger than P2, then V2 will be bigger than V1 and vice versa. It goes both ways. If V2 is bigger than V1, I, I can know that P2 is, will be bigger than... No, sorry. P1 will be bigger than P2. So this was, in principle, Bernoulli's principle. Okay, let's move on. Let's say you lit a candle and you hold a glass or some other round object in front of the candle and then you blow air at, the, at this object. What will happen? So you would expect the air to go up and the candle to not be affected by this. But what would actually happen, this is something you could try at home, is that you, you may be able to blow out the candle because the air will reach the candle. The air will go along the curved surface. This is a bit surprising and maybe counterintuitive. And this effect is called the Coanda effect. Koanda was a Romanian aeronautics engineer and he was the first one who discovered this uh, phenomenon. So let's take a closer look at uh, the Koanda effect. Basically you have air that's reaching uh, a curved surface and let's say this is kind of, uh, I don't know, a ball or a tube or the side of a glass, whatever, and hits the curved surface. And what happens, and I'm, I'm describing this in a bit uh, simplistic way, which is still good enough, the air that reaches the curved surface kind of pushes away the air molecules that were already there. And this creates an area of low pressure, and then the air is like sucked into that area, and this continues to happen until eventually the air passes the curved surface, but it moves along the curved surface. And basically this is what happens uh, in the Coanda effect and the external pressure, uh, a result of this is that the external pressure over the, the air is actually bigger and this is what kind of sticks the air to the surface. And this is also what happens when the air hits the, the wing. So the same principle happens, the air moves along the wing or moves along the curved surface. There is another uh, common example for Coanda effect, though officially it shouldn't be classified as Coanda effect because Coanda effect talks about the movement of air or gas, and in this example they use water. But you know it's a common example, so I wanted to put it in. Let's say you have a tap and you put again an, a round object under the tap. It can be a glass or a spoon. A common example is uh, with a spoon, and then you open the tap. And then the same thing as we've seen in the previous example happens. Instead of the water going sideways, the water actually continue to, to flow along the curved surface. And this is also a bit surprising. We would expect actually the water 
to go sideways, but the water goes down. And again, this is something you can try at home. And uh, basically, uh, it's very similar to Koanda effect. And it, it shows again an example when there's a movement of gas or liquid along a curved surface. Now we can continue. Let's say you have some kind of an object. It can be, for example, a molecule or a group of molecules. Oh, let's call it a, an object. In general, there is equal atmospheric pressure on this object from all directions. This is like in the classic normal situation. Now, let's say that this object is moving along a curve in a constant speed. And let's see what happens actually. So, because it moves in a constant speed, we can ignore Bernoulli's principle because there's no difference in pressure this object puts on the environment, let's say. On the other hand, we know that there is centrifugal force on this object that kind of pushes it away. It wants to throw it away from the surface. This is the centrifugal force. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, I recommend Googling it. It's quite known force. However, we know that the object keeps moving. The object keeps moving along the surface. That means that there must be something that kind of pushes it back, push it back towards the surface, and that is the atmospheric pressure. So practically speaking, the only way we can explain the fact that the ball or the object is moving along the curve is that the external or the upward atmospheric pressure is bigger than the atmospheric pressure that comes from below the object. So we can say that the external atmospheric pressure, the, the atmospheric pressure that comes from above, is bigger. We'll soon see why it is important. If you look in a vortex or a tornado or spiral or whatever, movement of air in a circular way, circular motion, you actually know that if you go from the outside towards the inside, the pressure will go down. And if you go from the inside towards the outside, the pressure will go up. So for example, in a tornado, the maximum pressure will be on the outskirts, on the, on the outside, and the minimal pressure will be on the inside, exactly like in the eye of the tornado. And this is closely related. This is, in fact, what I just talked about, the fact that because the air is moving in a circular motion there is difference in the pressure on that air from the outside to the inside or from the inside to the outside so in fact we actually i've actually reached the most important uh, part of the video let's go back to where we started we have a wing we have air hitting the wing and it moves along it above it and uh, below it now the thing is, what's important in this diagram is that this is an abstract diagram just to, to show the principle. The air doesn't really, you know, doesn't flow in these kind of lines with uh, this gap between them. But, you know, just for the example, think about that when I say P up or P down, I mean the air right above or right below the wing, like really right below, right above the wing. And when I say PATM2, or PATM1. This means the atmospheric pressure that exists in the, the place where the airplane is at a specific moment, either on the ground or in the air. So in this, in this diagram, uh, we know that there is uh, increasing pressure as you go up, as you go up the curve. So below the wing, the pressure goes up along the curve. And the exact opposite happens above the wing. Pressure goes down as we approach the wing. And again, this is just an example. And imagine that the red lines or the green lines here are just a matter of millimeters or centimeters above and below the wing. Now I can say that PATM, which is the general atmospheric pressure in this place, equals PATM1 equals PATM2. It's a reasonable assumption that PATM1 equals PATM2. And let's say in a, in a real world example, the, the distance between PATM1 to PATM2 will be, I don't know, 30 centimeters. So it's a reasonable assumption. Additionally, I know that PATM2, which is the pressure a little bit above the wing, uh, is actually bigger than the pressure just above the wing, which I call P up. And I can say a similar thing about uh, P down. P down uh, will actually be a little bit bigger than PATM1 because the pressure goes up as we approach the wing. So if I combine this, I reach an important conclusion. This is actually the conclusion I wanted to have in the beginning of this video. And that is that P down, the pressure right below the wing, the, the external pressure right below the wing, uh, is, is bigger than P up, the pressure above the wing. And this is actually, uh, this brings us back to the beginning of, of, of the series of videos, actually, that we wanted to understand why actually the air moves faster above the wing. And I said, 
showed that the reason is that the external pressure is lower there. And here we have it. We can see it here and we now we, you can understand why it happens. So, so far I talked about lift and I focused on Bernoulli's principle and I described the Coanda effect and talked about the movement of air over curved surfaces. But in fact, there are also other factors that affect lift. For example, when the Wright brothers developed the first airplane, they didn't use curved uh, wings. They actually used, uh, you can say, flat wings. And there are also other things that I did not talk about or refer to, so that's why I decided to make another video in which I'm going to refer to some other aspects, other aspects that affect lift, and some of them are actually even more important than Bernoulli's principle. And I'm also going to talk about a little bit about other assumptions I've made or simplifications I made, so stay tuned for the next video and I hope to see you back soon.